Okay, our final example for drawing cubic polynomials um, and it's actually just about cubic polynomial graphs. This time it tells us that the curve f of x is equal to mx cubed minus 34x squared plus 160x plus n and it has a local minimum value when x is equal to 8 and y is equal to negative uh, 72. Calculate the value of m and n. So we can see there's two unknowns in this function. Okay, m and n, we have to calculate them. Whenever we want to find an unknown value, we want equations. So we want some sort of equation. Now, it tells us we have a local minimum. Okay, in other words, a turning point that looks like this. Then, that would be a local minimum. Okay that would be a local maximum. So, how did we find this this number 8 and that number 72? Well, to find the 8, we said that the derivative of x was equal to 0. Now, we can't go and work out the derivative of x and make it equal to 0 and find a value for x because m is unknown. But we're not trying to find the point where there's a local minimum. We've been given that point. Okay, so if we do find the value, the derivative here, 3mx squared minus uh, 2 times 34 is 68x squared plus 160x um, becomes, that's, there's a 1 times 160 becomes just 160. Now what about the n? Well, remember, this is n times x to the power of 0. We are finding the derivative in terms of 0. So we look at, uh, sorry, in terms of x. So we look at the x's exponents and multiply that to the front. So in this case, the x, the 0 is multiplied with the n. So there's no more n here. Okay. And this would give me 0. Okay. And all we need now is to, we've got two unknowns here, but one of the unknowns are we already have a value for, 8. We know that 8 is a point where when I substitute 8 into the derivative, in other words, f of 8 is equal to 0, okay? Which means that we have 3m64, that's 8 squared, minus 68, Sorry, that shouldn't have a square there, I'm sorry. Times, uh, that was 2 times negative 34. So that's just 68x to the power of 1, because I didn't subtract the exponent, I apologize. Times 8 plus 160 is equal to 0. Okay, and now we need to solve for m. So m would equal... 168 times 8 minus 160 divided by 3 and divided by 64. So what do we get? I'll just use the calculator for this one. Uh, 68 times 8 minus 160 is equal to 384 divided by 3 is equal to 128 divided by 64 is equal to 2. Okay, so we get that m is simply equal to 2. What did I do? I made the derivative equal to 0, but this time instead of trying to find the, uh, the unknown x where it's turning, I have been given the x. I have to find one of the unknowns in that expression. Okay, That is if I have, uh, I've used the 8 now, how do I use the 72? Well, how did we get the 72? Well, the 72 is what we get when we substituted the 8 into f into this if i substitute 8 i get negative 72 because they tell me that at the point x equal to 8 my derivative is 0 which means my gradient is 0 my gradient at this point is 0 okay but 
It doesn't mean my y value is also 0. No, the y value in this case is equal to negative 72. How do we get that negative 72? We substitute it into the original function. So we know this is my equation. So now I already have m is 2. So 2x cubed plus minus 34x squared plus 160x okay plus n this is my f of x so f of 8 would equal 2 8 cubed minus 34 times 8 squared plus 160 times 8 plus n that answer should give me negative 72 okay so let's take all the constants add them up and subtract them on this side so we get 2 times 8 cubed minus 34 times 8 squared plus 160 times 8 those are all the constants that I get when I add up all of these values okay and that must be subtracted on the other side so we have 72 negative minus 128 gives me negative 200 so n is equal to negative 200 there I've calculated m and n using the exact same thing I've been doing the whole time making the derivative equal to zero to find the turning point this time the x of the turning point has been given so I substitute it into that derivative to find an equation where I only have m when m is then calculated I find it that it's 2 and now to find n I see well the second value or the y value here is given as negative 72 which is the value I get when 8 is substituted so what I have actually at this point is I've got an equation with only one unknown and if you if you've been in any of my function uh, lessons you will know I always say if I've got one parameter left to solve substitute any point and that's what I did I substituted x with 8 and I substituted y with negative 72 because this is a coordinate on the curve. That point is the point 8, negative 72. Therefore, when I substitute it into the equation, the left-hand side must equal right-hand side because it lies on this equation. Okay, so I think I've explained it as best I can. Uh, if it didn't help, I'm sorry I wasn't any help, but hopefully I did. See you in the next topic.